actually most people don't care about my art, which is, you know, it makes sense. I kind of, I'm more of like a jackass on the internet. So on YouTube and stuff, you know, I kind of uh, make fun of myself and make fun of other people. And sometimes I kind of sell my body as well. My name's Ethan Becker. I am a uh, animator, producer. The higher you go, the less drawing you do. So I don't do that much more. I don't do drawing these days as much, you know. I, uh, setting up my own shots and stuff like that. And, yeah. So basically, you see the final images, you know, in, uh, in animation. I do the step right before that. I do, like, the most simplest, basic uh, drawings, you know, possible. And uh, setting up the major story. And also a lot of the writing. I started out as background design and then uh, moved into background painting. And then I realized, you know what, people don't care about the backgrounds or the environments. They, uh, they care about the characters, so move from backgrounds into characters. Yeah, I guess so. I've spent a lot of years uh, learning from other professionals, you know, and uh, now, I'm, now I can do my own thing, yeah. Oh, well, to sell my class, I uh, kind of wear, I wore some like uh, short booty shorts, you know, and I think that my class sales went up after that, it turned out a lot of people didn't care about the art as much as they just wanted to see me strip in front of my camera. You know, you just gotta make money where you can. Yep, slightly. I thought it was a joke too, but I was like, oh, I think my sales did go up. In the beginning when I started in art, you know, I was like, I don't wanna work with anybody. You know, it's like cutthroat. I don't wanna work with the team. It's all gonna be me. And then after I got into like a really good crew, and I was like, these are my people, you know. It's nice, finding your crew. Musician, yeah, it was either gonna be music or animation. And there's actually a lot in common with that, you know. Beat, uh, creating a hook, it's all the same thing. It's all pretty much the same thing. So yeah, I'd be a musician. If all else fails, well I grew up camping, so if all else fails, I'm gonna be living in the woods. Uh, and that's, that's as worse as it can get, you know. Living in the woods, eating the berries. The very first time I saw a Miyazaki film, my grandparents had rented it from the store. They're like, oh, it's just a cartoon, you know, cartoon thing. But it was the scene that I walked in on was Ashitaka when he like pulls his bow back and he shoots the arrow so strong that it just cuts this guy's arms in half. My grandparents were like, what the heck? What kind of cartoon is this, you know? As soon as I saw that, I was like, whoa, that's really cool, you know, cinematically. Sorry, I keep looking into the camera. I'm used to like recording my videos, just like constantly looking at the camera. The biggest mistake that I made that turned into something good might be, I'm not sure if this really, I'm not sure if this answers your question, but when I first got into the, the business, you know, I was trying to like start to make like manly art. You know, I want to make concept art. I want to, you know, do like that super, just like big buff dudes and cool video game background painting and stuff like that. And then, uh, Kevin Chen, one of my first teachers said, you should try this visual development class, you know, for like Disney work and stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't want to do Disney stuff. That don't little Barbie, Polly Pockets, stupid little kids stuff, you know. But after I took a class, I was like, this is, this is where it's at. Uh, yeah. People think that the art needs to take the forefront, which is like the visual part. But the visual part doesn't matter. It's everything that's underneath the story, that's all motivated by it. So I think that's kind of deceptive, right? Oh, you, you create art, you create animation. It's not about the animation, it's not about the visuals. That's all cool, you know, and you do need to do that to, for people to take you seriously, but it's a story first. Visualize, I think a lot of people don't visualize. They immediately jump into the art and they start drawing or whatever. Whenever I mean visualize, I mean like, for me, and this is what I tell everybody, I tell my students, just get completely naked, oil yourself up, and then listen to, you know, the music that, that you want in this world. Try to visualize the scene. You don't have to get naked, but if you wanted to, you can. And that kind of helps me. I want to get into something that's almost like rotoscoping, you know? I want to get a professional actor in, uh, and even if it's 2D animation, I want to study their mannerisms, you know, the little things that they do, and maybe not quite rotoscoping, but um, study professional acting, yeah. Take a little piece of tape, stick it to the actor's face, you know? Something like that. Playgrounds is the best convention I've ever been to in my life. The convention is extremely hospitable. Uh, everybody's extremely nice. 
and there hasn't been a single person to heckle me in the crowd. Every single American art convention I've been to, I was shedding a tear of pain at the end of it. But at the end of this convention, the Playgrounds convention, every day I'm shedding a tear of happiness. I think that's the major difference, you know. I'm happy, I'm just happy here. So like I said in the beginning, I wanted to do concept art stuff and it's not as colorful, right? It's very muted colors and stuff like that. Then I got into visual development and you can be like super just punchy with your colors. And I'm, I was kind of scared to do that at first, right? But now it is kind of freeing. If I have one last thing to say is just let the colors free you, you know? You can paint with all the colors of the wind, but I don't really like color that much, you know? I like good storytelling, I like good writing. I don't like animation, I study a lot of live action, and I read a lot, you know, a lot of good fiction. I think I get that a lot when I'm watching shows, and I'm like, I could have done that, I, should, I, I could have done better than that. And the whole time I'm doubting myself, and I think a lot of students doubt themselves too, it's like, am I good enough? And sometimes you're not good enough. <laughs> but oftentimes, you know, the students, they already have the chops, the storytelling chops within them, within their hearts but they just need to learn the tools to be able to tell those stories visually. A lot of people are chasing, right? They're trying to chase this, uh, they're trying to chase the social trends or whatever, and I've done that, and I'm currently doing that all the time. But you gotta find a way to get ahead of that. And that's what we're doing with Project City, is we're trying to create something amazing. Not worrying about all the other stuff, we're trying to create this thing, and if you create something, then people should be able to come in. Trying to create your own trends, basically, you know? I don't take myself seriously because um, I think art and producing is just a bunch of failing over and over and over again. And you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't take yourself so seriously that you can't fail, you know, or at least learn from it. And so for me, I try to go out of my way to kind of make a fool of myself uh, just so I can kind of learn from that. Just get used to failing, I guess. Yeah, failing's okay. It's good. It's a good thing. <laughs>